Michael, I don't think needs any introduction. Next slide, please. Um, Michael founded Opal back way back when in 2006, 2007, Michael, I think. Do you want to switch your, your camera on then? I do remember Beacon Rise that you just saw in that wee video. They were the first school that Michael took me to in about 2008, 2009. I remember walking around the playground with Michael and the, the head teacher there and just being overawed by the difference it's made, um, investing in their playtimes. Michael, should, I should be able to see you. Now. There we are. I've, turned, I've managed to retrieve my controls. Well done. Well done. All right, Michael, over to you. Tell us about evidence-based practice and OPAL. Good, right, let me just start from the beginning. Hi everybody, I'm Michael Follett. I am founder and director of Opal Outdoor Play and Learning, and my talk is Evidence-Based Practice and Opal. The format that I've used for today's presentation is coincidentally the same format that the inspectorate in England use when they're looking at practice in schools, which is intent, what's the evidence that you're doing what you are doing is the best for your children? How do you implement what you're doing and how do you know what you're implementing? And what evidence can you provide that what you're doing is good current practice? So let's start with financial evidence. Um, and specifically speaking to schools here, in the UK, play makes up one fifth of a school day and so if you're we're thinking about budget, that's a fifth of your school budget. So, OK, in reality, schools only spend 2.25% of their total budget on supervising play. But actually, that's an hour of your school time. So in a, in a school of 220 children, that one hour is costing you £320,000 a year. So my first challenge to senior leaders is how much do your play times cost you? What is one fifth of your budget. And are you getting good value from this? Uh, excuse the visual pun here, but if you, if, if you were asked to provide evidence of the intent for how you, you plan and deliver one fifth of your school day, what evidence would you provide? What, what would you show um, as the evidence for your existing practice? So let's think about the people that uh, are delivering this one fifth of the school day. In Opal, we call them the play team because we think they should be delivering play. So it sounds a fairly simple thing. So my next evidence gathering job for you is dig out the job descriptions of the people who supervise playtime in your school and find out what they say. What do they say about play? What do they say about the point of the job? And now dig around and try to find out how much training do they have to deliver this one fifth of school life? How much time do they have for reflective practice and for improving what they do? Implementation. In play work, one of the ways that we can assess whether we're providing great play or not is to assess it against uh, knowledge. So we use Bob Hughes's taxonomy of play types and we accept that there are 16 different kinds of play and a good play environment will enable every child access to all of those types of play within, within their playtime. So what I suggest to you to gather evidence is go outside and assess your own environment on how well it provides for these 16 types of play or follow a child around and tick off how much you think they're accessing them. If you want to know more about the 16 play types, go to the resources page on the Opal website and you'll find 16 presentations, one on each of the play types. So the next bit of evidence I would like you to look at in your establishments is about equality. We go into about 150... Uh, Michael, Michael yeah. you, you're not sharing your presentation. What? Oh, I know, I know. The first time people, it's the first time we've allowed people to do their own sharing of PowerPoints and I knew we should have practiced this more beforehand. But um, if you go to the bottom of Zoom, you should be able to share your screen. All right, I'm really sorry. Let's no? just 
Um, there you go. Michael Follett has started screen sharing. Perfect. Thanks, Michael. Do okay. you want to jump to where you were? Because it was really clear. And then I suddenly realized that you'd referred to a picture. OK, let's just go through that. Um, financial cost, we've heard you back. There's the visual pan. Uh, what's your intent? Intents, obviously. The play team. Right, there's the 16 play types. What I'm suggesting is you, that you audit your own provision to see what quality you're providing. OK, so this is. Um, this is about equality. And from our experience, at playtimes, the money from the sports premium in the UK is spent seven pounds to one pound in favour of boys. I'd like you to find out what the figure is if you are a UK primary school. If you're not a UK primary school, how are you actually investing fairly in your play provision? Again, from our experience, the grass areas in school, as much as 90% is set aside for boys and their football. Multi-use games areas, as much as 100% of the time is set aside for, for boys, and up to 80% of tarmac areas is dominated by boys' play. So, the challenge in evidence, go and print out Google Map of your school, get a highlighter pen, and do some research about what's the fair use of space in your school. So what evidence do you gather about the effectiveness of your current approach to, to play times? What criteria are you measuring against to know that it is good? How satisfied are pupils in the provision that you're providing? And how does your school compare with examples of best practice? And if you do want to see an example of best practice, do get along to an Opal Platinum School where you will see a school where every child has an amazing playtime every day. Other things that you might look at that would give you an indication of how things are going are do you have very high levels of recorded first aid? A lots of teaching and SLT time lost to the consequences of playtime? And have you got lots of recorded incidents of, of behavior incidents in your book? We think that every child should have a minimum of 45 minutes uninterrupted, self-regulated play. So again, go out and audit your children. How much are they getting? The real point that I want to make with the report is that evidence-based practice is not just about the evidence for new interventions. The case for play in school is making the case for intervening about play. It's also about the evidence supporting the status quo. So what, have you, what facts have you got to support keeping things the same when we know that there is something so much better out there? So I know it's a brief presentation. I know you only got to see some of the slides. We'll make sure that they are all available to you. But really, this is about helping everybody understand what the current level of provision is for lunch and playtimes and how we might take steps in order to make those even better. So enjoy the rest of the conference um, and download the report as soon as you can from the website. It's up and live now.